My campaign takes place in a homebrew world I created called Anulis, which is this sort of kind of ring around a sun. Currently they're going through this sort of like Colosseum trial. It's in this undercity beneath the Great Junction, which is kind of like the largest city on the continent they're on. So they're looking for this character named Hamish that they know about but don't really know that much about. Basically, one of them, her name is Natalia, she's trying to basically get back in with her parents after kind of abandoning a mission that they had given her a while ago, but they've presented her with the opportunity of a new mission, but in order for her to receive that mission, she has to prove to them that she is invested in rejoining the Thieves Guild. And the kind of initial encounter of this, they were fighting the Hydra, which they kind of went all out in. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they manage to do this kind of multiple encounters after they've exhausted a lot of their big spell slots and resources in that initial battle. So. You enter into, yet again, an identical Colosseum pit, just kind of like, you know, a couple inches of sand on the ground uh, to soften, you know, falls or whatever. There is a door to your left, kind of this large ornate keyhole, and in the center is a circle of mushrooms. Everton, do you have, like, detect magic? I do. I cast detect magic. Excellent. Here again, you cast detect magic and the circle of mushrooms lights up and the door lights up. Ooh. Oh, wait, you said there's a lock on it? Mm -hmm. Let me try it. Is it locked? Yes. Uh, guys, get in the ring. I come into the ring of the mushroom. Okay, they are dead. You well, turn I, into a sprite. I would like to become a sprite also. Guys, <laughs> it's awesome in here. You have to come in here. Yeah, sure, why okay. not? It is the best ring of mushrooms ever. Uh -huh. In there. Cool. So uh, you ready. all turn into sprites. <laughs> the lock falls off the door. You turn back normal. <laughs> We've done a lot of stuff with mushrooms in the past. Yeah, it's been a quite of an adventure. So uh, usually, I'm the first one to get in there. Like the mushrooms, that's my thing. So I was a little bit surprised when Malthale, like the safe one, he ran right in, got in those mushrooms, and I was right behind him. But uh, I thought it was really interesting that we had to kind of bring our other fellow mates in there and I'm kind of surprised Natalia didn't put up a fight she just ran right in there even though you know we definitely changed to other beings in the next room you see this large goliath probably maybe 10 feet tall just kind of like sitting in a large chair behind kind of like this line in the sand and then you kind of see like a board with foot markers going all the way to 50 feet he kind of looks up at you and he's like good eye my name is mikey and we're going to be doing a barrel throwing contest basically one of you just have to throw one of these iron barrels farther than me and then you can progress okay I will throw the barrel. All right. My name's Mikey. What's your name? Malfell. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. <laughs> All right, Malfell. Would you like to throw first or should I? You should throw first. I should throw first. All right. He hefts one of the iron barrels and he throws it 15 feet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not my best work. Uh, Malthel, you heft one of these barrels, and it's initially pretty heavy, but then Aradan taps you on your shoulder. And I just go, oh, you're so strong, big boy. Unfortunately, our party doesn't uh, doesn't really have a token uh, strong guy anymore. Unfortunately, I was one of my best buds, Newell, that uh, got taken out a while ago. But uh, this new guy, Aradan, he, he kind of took me aside and he looked deeply into my eyes and I, I looked deeply into his. And I just knew that I was going to be strong enough to beat that Goliath. You have this barrel. Yeah, you're able to throw it out uh, 35 feet. Much more than he That's did. Uh, and he's like, well, I'm really disappointed in myself, <laughs> hey, honestly. I thought it was good. I liked it your, wasn't. I liked your form. You looked good doing it. Yeah, there's just one door forward uh, that you go through. Something else that you notice immediately is that your steps make no noise. What does? And as you try to talk, you also make no noise. <laughs> so you are not allowed to communicate. I cast Rary's telepathic bond. Well, cool. You guys can telekinetically communicate. 
I try to roll with the punches as much as I can. I've kind of accepted at this point that characters are very often going to do a lot of things that I don't anticipate, so I try to keep things as open-ended as possible, and yes, and as much as possible. I generally have story beats set up, and I'm able to guide people to go where I want to, but, um, you know, how they end up getting there is always something that I'm not really able to anticipate. Yeah, fire pit in the middle, not lit. Okay. Let's light it. Light the bitch. Come on, Natalia. Uh, 17. 17. Natalia gets a fire pit. Yeah. Gets thrown, and the door opens up. <laughs> I feel like I'm usually pretty quick on my feet. I walked into that room, realized that we couldn't talk to each other, and I was like, damn. I gotta cast Rarys telepathic bond so that we can all communicate with each other. And then, I also figured out how to use a flint and steel. As you enter into the next room, first thing you immediately notice is this room is dark. But that's where we're gonna end the session.